Hey there, you're watching Wildflower Video Tips. I'm Lindsay Moe, and today I'm going to show you how to create an epic four-way video that'll leave your viewers hungry for more. I think most of us have been drawn in at one point or another by one of those longer videos, maybe on Facebook or YouTube, promising to show something like six awesome kitchen hacks or four cupcakes that look like your favorite Game of Thrones character. They're a great way to draw your viewers in and create interest around more than one of your recipes. But how do you create that amazing intro shot where you get to see them all on the screen at the same time? It's not that hard to do. All we need to do is play around with the scale and position of our videos in the effects panel. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. Before we get started, I would love for you to hit subscribe right below this video so you never miss another video from me. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. To get started with my four-way video, I have just opened up a new project in Premiere Pro and I have named it after the video that I'll be making, which is for Thanksgiving side dishes. There are two ways we can go about creating a four-way video. You could import four completed videos that you have already exported and maybe encoded and use those to create your four-way video. I'm going to show you another way, which is how to open up the existing projects for those videos so we can work with the raw footage and have a little more control over our finished product. So to do that, you just need to go up to File, Open Project. Now that I have all four projects open, I can go to this little double carrot menu in the project panel and see that I have one, two, three, four, five projects currently open. One is my four-way project and the other four are the individual projects for the videos I'm going to be including. I want to be in my four-way project and I'm going to create a new sequence. To do that, I'm going to click down here on this little piece of paper and choose sequence. And I'm just going to name it after what my video is, which is for Thanksgiving side dishes. Now what we need to do is go into each individual project. I'm going to open up the 16 by nine version. I don't need my music or the end card on these that I have included. So I'm just going to drag and highlight and copy, command C, and paste, command V in my new project. And I'm going to do that with all four of my videos. Now that I have all four videos in my four-way sequence, there's not a lot else I need to do there unless I want to match up the titles better than maybe I did originally. If you know you're going to be creating a four-way video out of a handful of recipes, it's a good idea to use similar titles when you are editing that video and maybe even shooting some similar hero shots for the beginning or the end that will look cohesive together. I was not planning on doing a four-way video when I shot each of these recipes, so they all look a little different and I could go back and fix up the titles a little bit. But now I want to show you how to create the four-way split screen. To do that, I'm going to come out here towards the end and just have a little space to work. And I'm going to open up each sequence again and choose my hero shot. Usually that shows up at the beginning and the end. And again, I can just select it, copy, and paste. I like to put the first video that appears in the sequence on V1, the second video on V2, and so on. So I need to double check to see where each of these show up. It looks like my stuffing is last, so I will drag that up to V4. 
These Brussels sprouts, I believe, were third. Potatoes were second. And I could have left all these sequins open when I copied and pasted them, but I just like to keep things kind of tidy. So now I have all four of these stacked on top of each other. And as you can see, all you can see is what's on V4. So now what we need to do is reposition them so they are all visible through the effects panel. To do this, let's start with V4, and we are going to set that to a 50% scale and a position of 1440 and 810. That puts it down here in the right hand corner so that when we're finished, we can go one, two, three, four in the order that you see them in the video. For video number three, again, we're going to go to 50% and set that to 480 and 810. Video two will be 50% at 1440 and 270. And finally, video layer one will be 50% at 480 by 270. Now we have all four videos neatly set in their own space, but I need to straighten them out a little bit so that they fill an equal amount of time. As you can see, video layer four is longer than the others. And these might be a little short for intros and outros anyways. You can see I've already changed the clip speed on a couple of these. So I can enable my rate stretch tool by pressing R and stretch this one out without losing too much. It will just move slower, which is still faster than natural speed. I'm going to clip this V1 right where the fork comes out. Actually, I'll give it a little more. B2, I think we can trim a little bit off the front. B3 can definitely cut a little bit off. And V4 can take a little off the beginning and the end. Now those Brussels sprouts come out of the frame a little bit faster than the rest of them. So if I was being really picky, I could get in there and play around with the positioning of the clip. I might use the slip tool to help me do that and move it around or rate stretch or just choose a different portion of the clip. Also, this fork coming in from the right looks a little strange when I kind of want everything to point towards the middle. You can see this spoon and this spoon point towards the middle, and then this one is a little, little out of place. So to take care of that, I can come in here and go to the effects panel. I just press shift seven to jump right there, and I'm going to search for horizontal flip. And that is on V1. So I just drag that over, and now the fork comes in from the other side and it looks a little more cohesive to me. I am now ready to add this to the beginning or the end of my video wherever I want to use it. If you wanted to create more of a border in between the videos, you could create just a few simple lines in Photoshop, or you could come back into the effects panel 
and play around with the size and position of them. You can see if you just change the scale a little bit, you get more of a border and we could move it over and up. There are a lot of different ways you could do it. And if you wanted a white border while doing this, you could just create a title in legacy titles and give it a white background and put it on V1 and move everything else up a layer so that you just see the white behind it. But I'm going to leave this how it was and we are now ready to create our square version. I'm just going to select and copy each of these into a new sequence. I'm back here in my four way project and I'm just going to create another new sequence. Or what we could do is we could just duplicate this sequence and then we have all of our video in there ready for us. This sequence we want to be a square, so I'm going to go to Sequence Settings and set it to 1080 by 1080. And you can see immediately that this four way doesn't work. No matter how much we position it, it's going to be difficult to get all of the action neatly into squares. So we need to do something to help that. And to do that, we're going to create another new sequence. And we will call this one square exports because it is only going to be for creating the square versions of this video. Now I'm going to paste in those four layers and I'm going to pull them down into their own individual layers. I like to leave a little bit of black space in between them just to make them easy to see, but you could put them right next to each other if you wanted. It's also a good idea when you're first creating your four way sequence to just pull them into this square exports sequence before you reposition them because you can see now we need to set them back to their original settings, which is 100% at 540 by 540. And this one got a little off on the anchor point, so I'm going to set it to 540 by 540 as well. So now we have those back in position and I'm just going to turn this into a square sequence. And you might need to reposition your clips a little bit so the action is in the center of the square. Looks like both of these need to move to the left a little bit. And this one's kind of tough, but I might just move it over so you see a little more of the fork. So now we have them set in squares and all we need to do is set our out point at the end. I'm just clicking out here past the end and pressing up arrow, back arrow and O to do that. And then over here back in our project, Find your square export sequence, click on it and export. I like to press command M or you could go to file export. And we don't need to 
send it to Media Encoder or anything. Just choose where you want to save it to and click export. Now that we have exported, we can head back to our four-way project and import what we just exported. To do that, I'm going to press Command-I, or you could go up to File, Import. And if I open that up in the Source Monitor, you can see we have all of our square clips we can go back into our square sequence, which I should label as square. I just made a copy and didn't label it, but I will go back and call it for Thanksgiving side dishes square. And we can get rid of these clips because they won't work for us. And now we just need to set an in and an out to grab each of these clips. Again, I have set them up on V1, V2, V3, and V4 in the order that they appear in the video. And now we can open up our original sequence and just copy and paste the settings onto the square export. So for V1 with the carrots, I'm going to click Command C to copy, come over to the square, click on that clip, and Option Command V to paste the settings. I do not want to paste the horizontal flip because it's already flipped. I just want to paste the motion. And we will do that for all four videos. You can see our timing got off a little bit here, but you can just grab these and cut them down so that they are all the same length. And now we have a four-way square video. You can keep your first four-way video project as a template if you plan on making more four-way videos, and then you don't need to set the positions every time. You can just open your four-way project, create a copy, or open it in addition to the project you're working on. And like I just showed you, copy and paste the settings onto the videos that you're using in your new project. You don't even need to keep the media files themselves. It doesn't matter if there is no media linked to these clips. It will keep the settings and you can use them to copy and paste onto that new project. You can also use this concept to create any kind of split screen you like. Maybe you want to show two steps from the recipe at the same time, like slicing vegetables and putting them on a baking sheet. You could create a two-way split screen using the same method, just calculating your position numbers differently. You could also do a six-way, eight-way, or whatever you'd like or you need for your own project. Just remember, if you're trying something different and you can't your get your video to fit exactly how you want, pull it into a sequence that is set at the same dimensions you want to use it in. For example, we did this with a square, export it and pull it back in so it's ready to use. I also wanted to make you aware of this free split screen template for Premiere Pro from Premiere Gal. She is another great YouTube creator that you can go check out if you want to learn more about Premiere Pro. But it's basically you just download it. It doesn't cost anything. She has a tutorial on her page here all about how to use it. It is a little more complicated than just creating the split screen yourself, but she has a lot of really fun options for different types of split screens that might be more difficult to create on your own. To use it, I'm back here in my four-way project and I'm just going to open her template project. And you can see it opens up a lot of different things that might feel overwhelming, but essentially you just use these placeholders to insert your video. 
And then you have a lot of different templates to choose from. There is a four way like we just created, as well as a lot of just different kinds. Here's a three way. This one has two horizontal videos as well as a square over here on the right, which is kind of interesting. But you can watch her tutorial if you want to learn more about how to use this and just be aware that it's an option if you're trying to do something a little more complicated that you don't know how to do. That's it. I would love to see any four way videos or other types of split screens you create after watching this video. Check out the description box below where I have linked my Facebook group and you are welcome to share your projects there every Monday and Friday or just hang out, ask questions, get to know other people working through this just like you. Before you head out, I would love to have you give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe right below here so you never miss another video from me. I'm here every Tuesday with a new tip and would love to have you join our community. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.